Good afternoon and welcome to NTV News. I'm Siksha Sharma. We take a look into the headlines first. Kathmandu District Administration expands prohibitory zones for protests and mass gatherings. A prohibitory order issued around President's Office and Prime Minister's residence. Israel Hamas ceasefire deal reached. Hamas agrees to release 50 hostages during a four day pause in fighting. North Korea claims successful launch of a spy satellite. South Korea to suspend part of military pact following the claim. Welcome back to NTV News. We take a look into news in detail now. The District Administration Office Kathmandu has issued prohibitory order in the areas around the President's office, Shital Nivas, and Prime Minister's residence in Balwatar. Issuing the order last night, Kathmandu Chief District Officer Jitendra Bosnet said the order has prohibited gatherings in groups of more than five people for protest, procession, sit-in, hunger strike and assembly. The order has come into effect on November 21 and will remain in force up to 30 days. The order has prohibited gatherings in Sheetal Nivas up to Pabitra workshop towards the east, up to Kanal through Samakushi under towards the west, up to southeast gate of the National Police Training Academy towards the north, and up to Mood leading to the police hospital in the south. Likewise, the order has declared the areas from the workshop choke to Nepal Rasta Bank choke towards Balwatar and from speaker residence up to 100 meters in the west south of Hare Road leading to Gairidhara as the prohibited zone. It is noted that gatherings in groups for sit-in and protest in the areas having residents and offices of distinguished persons may break peace and security and disrupt public service delivery. So these areas were declared as prohibited zone. Earlier, the local administration issued a prohibitory order in Maitighar, Baneshwar and Pulchok area of Lalitpur. Nepal police have urged the users not to employ VPN and DNS platforms for the operation of a government banned social site TikTok. The police cautioned the people for not using illegal and unsafe VPN and DNS platforms as it may result in the theft and loss of their secret and sensitive data. It may be noted that the Nepal government on November 13 had decided to completely ban the operations of social site TikTok. The Nepal police have called for the users to not use unlawful and unsafe platforms such as VPN and DNS. The Nepal Police Cyber Security Bureau said it is most sensitive when the incidents of cybercrime are increasing of late. The District Disaster Management Committee, Jaja Court, has directed the municipalities in the district to submit to the full details of the physical infrastructures damaged due to earthquake within November 23rd. A meeting of the DDMC issued directive to the ruling municipalities and municipalities in the district. The meeting instructed the local governments to classify houses into either fit for living or unfit for living and get it decided upon by the local level disaster management committee and recommend the same to the district based DDMC coordinated by chief district officer. The DDMC meeting stated that the present details sent by the municipalities were not clear and directed them to send full details. Similarly, the government officers concerned have also been urged to send the details of damage caused by the earthquake to government offices. Schools are run from temporary sheds as most of the school buildings in the district have been destroyed by the disaster. It is said that money would be given to those persons whose houses have been damaged to the extent they are not safe for living in, only for construction of temporary shelters. Although the federal government has decided to immediately provide 50,000 per family for the construction of temporary shelter in the disaster hit zone, the amount has still not been deposited in the bank account of the municipalities. And let's take a look into a short break here. More news follows up next to, to stay with us. Welcome back to NTV News to our small update. The 46th International Conference of IFAWPCA, the umbrella organization of construction professionals from 18 countries in Asia and the West Pacific region, kicked off in Kathmandu today. President Ram Chandra Podil inaugurating the conference said those involved in the field of physical infrastructure development must adopt measures to minimize its negative impacts on climate and environment. 
saying physical infrastructure change plays a crucial role in economic development of the country. The president urged the building professionals to prioritize environment-friendly sustainable development mechanisms in their works. The conference aims to attract international investment in the development of Nepal's physical infrastructure. IFAWPCA, the umbrella organization of construction professionals, has more than 24,000 members from across Asia and the West Pacific. Taking it to the international front where Israel and Hamas have agreed a deal to release 50 hostages being held in Gaza during a four-day pause in fighting. If successful, it will be the first break since the beginning of the war. The deal was approved after a marathon meeting of Israel's war cabinet that ran into the early hours of Wednesday. Under the deal, the release of every additional 10 hostages will extend the pause in fighting by one day. Before the meeting, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the war effort would continue even if a hostage agreement was stuck. Israel began attacking Gaza after Hamas fighters crossed the border on the 7th of October killing 1,200 people and taking more than 240 others hostage. Meanwhile, Chinese President Xi Jinping called for the release of civilian detainees and an immediate ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas. China state media reported that Xi on Tuesday attended the BRICS Extraordinary Virtual Summit on the Palestinian-Israeli issue and delivered the speech. The conflict in Gaza is raging on to its second month and China is gravely concerned that the conflict is causing enormous civilian casualties and a humanitarian disaster and tends to expand and spill over, said the Chinese president. He said the international community must act with practical measures to prevent the conflict from spilling over and endangering stability in the Middle East as a whole. He further said the only viable way to break the cycle of Palestinian-Israeli conflict lies in the two-state solution in the restoration of the legitimate national rights of Palestine and the establishment of an independent state of Palestine. There can be no successful peace and security in the Middle East without a just solution to the question. Let's take a look into yet another break here. Stay with us for more updates. Welcome back to our more update. North Korea claims it has successfully put a military spy satellite into space after two earlier attempts failed this year. It comes after a meeting between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un in September where Moscow offered Pyongyang help with its space program. South Korea says it has not confirmed yet if the satellite is operational, but it says it believes the North received help from Russia. Following the launch, South Korea announced it would resume surveillance along its border with the North, thereby taking steps to suspend parts of a deal agreed by the two countries in 2018 that is aimed at lowering military tensions. North Korean state news agency KCN has said the satellite name Maling Yong Wan had accurately entered orbit and leader Kim Jong-un had observed the launch. The launch had been condemned by the UN, which maintained sanctions on North Korea due to its nuclear missile development and other countries, including the US and Japan. A camera captured footage of the 41 workers trapped in a tunnel in India's Uttarakhand state for the first time in nine days. The video was filmed using an endoscopic camera on Tuesday that was slipped inside a new pipe drilled into the tunnel. Rescuers also used the pipe to give the workers their first hot meal in days. So far, they had been subsisting on snacks sent through a narrower pipe inserted earlier the under construction tunnel caved in after a landslide. The incident took place on the morning of 12 November in the northern states with the Rakshi district. Contact with the trapped men was established soon after that and they are being provided oxygen, food and water since then. Time now for other updates. Time now for sports update.
Nicolas Otamendi scored with a towering header to give Argentina a 1-0 away win over Brazil in a bad-tempered World Cup qualifier that was delayed by half an hour on Tuesday after police clashed with fans at a sold-out Maracana stadium of Brazil. The long-standing sporting rivalry between two of the most successful teams in the world soccer hit fever pitch after the Brazilian police charged Argentinian fans in response to fighting in the stands during the national anthems. The world champions led by captain Lionel Messi went over to the terraces to try and calm the situation before leaving the pitch and returning to the dressing room for more than 10 minutes. The five times world champions Brazil plunged to a third straight defeat, their first ever at a home in a World Cup qualifier to stand sixth in the standings, eight points behind leaders Argentina and in the last spot that guarantees a berth at the 2026 finals. The UN General Assembly called Tuesday for the observance of the traditional Olympic truce during the next year's Paris Summer Games as Russia again condemned what it called the political interference in sport. The resolution adopted with 118 votes in favor to none against the urges member states to observe the Olympic truce individually and collectively. From seven days before the start of the Games next summer until seven days after the Paralympic Games also held in Paris have concluded, Russia and Syria abstained from the vote. The resolution prepared by Olympic host nation France also calls for cooperation to collectively implement values of the Olympic truce around the world. Olympic truce resolutions had been adopted by consensus every two years before the winter and summer games, but Russia called for a vote this year, saying the text should have included references to equal depoliticized access to sport competitions. The IOC considered Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 to be a violation of the Olympic truce passed ahead of the Beijing Winter Olympics. And this brings us to the end of the bulletin to, uh, wrap up of the uh, top stories as a headline. <laughs> Kathmandu District Administration expands prohibitory zones for protest and mass gatherings. Prohibitory order issued around President's Office and Prime Minister's residence. Israel Hamas ceasefire deal reached. Hamas agrees to release 50 hostages during the four day pause in fighting. North Korea claims successful launch of a spy satellite south to suspend part of military pact following the claim. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead. Namaste.